Welcome to the NCLEX Review, where I help you review all the things you need to know for NCLEX. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. Let's talk about hematological and oncology. So first we have cancer. And this is a malignant neoplastic disorder that can spread throughout the body. It can be solid tumors or hematological cancers of the blood cells forming tissue. Metastases is when cancer moves from its original location to other locations, and it can do this in various ways. So first, it can do this by local seeding, which is distribution of shedding cancer cells and occurs in the local area of the primary tumor. It can use blood-borne metastases, so the tumor cells enter the blood. This is the most common cause of cancer spread or lymphatic spread, so the primary sites rich in lymphatics are more susceptible to early metastatic spread. And let's talk about grading and staging of cancer. So first to grade zero, this is carcinoma in situ. Then we have stage one. This is going to be our grade is cells differ slightly from normal cells and are well differentiated and the stage is that tumor is limited to tissues of origin localized growth so this it has not metastasized it's only in the tissue of origin with localized growth when we move on to two these cells are abnormal and moderately differentiated and there's just a limited local spread Three, cells are very abnormal and poorly differentiated, and this has extensive local and regional spread. And stage four, cells are immature, undifferentiated, and cells of origin are difficult to determine, and these have distant metastases. So warning signs of cancer. We can remember the acronym CAUTION, so changes in bowel and bladder habits, any sore that does not heal, unusual bleeding or discharge, thickening or lump in the breast or elsewhere, indigestion, obvious changes in warts or a mole, and nagging cough or hoarseness. To diagnose, a biopsy is the definitive means of diagnosing cancer. The tissue is then examined under a microscope. Dif let's talk about different types of treatment. So first, we have chemotherapy. This is going to kill or inhibit the reproduction of neoplastic cells and also kill normal cells in skin, hair, and GI lining. Then we have radiation. This destroys cancer cells with minimal exposure to normal cells. It's effective only for tissue in the direct pathway of the radiation beam. Side effects are local site changes. So they might have reddening of the skin. They might have pain in that area where they got the radiation. This is really just they focus it on an area where they can shoot the beam in at it, where chemotherapy is going through your entire body and it's attacking normal cells. Nursing interventions. We want to wash irrated area with water and soap daily. Do not remove the markings for the radiation beam, so they'll actually mark where they're shooting the radiation. Do not use powder, lotions, creams on skin at radiation site. Avoid any clothing or binding that will rub the skin too much at the radiation site, and we want to avoid exposure to the sun. And infection is a major cause of death for immunocompromised patients, so those on chemotherapy. We want to make sure they know to take proper precautions to not catch infections and also the signs and symptoms of infections. All right, so nursing interventions for patients with a sealed radiation implant. So this is they actually implant something with radiation in the body. So we want to place the client in a private room with a private bath, place a radiation precaution sign on their door, Organize our nursing task to minimize exposure to the radiation source because when we go in there, we'll be exposed. Nursing assignments to a client with a radiation implant should be rotated. Limit time to 30 minutes per care provider per shift. That's why we are doing all of our tasks as much as we can at once. 
wear a dosimer film badge to measure radiation exposure. Lead shielding may be used to reduce exposure to radiation. The nurse should never care for more than one client with a radiation implant at one time. The nurse should never care. Oh, do not allow a pregnant nurse to care for the client. Do not allow children younger than 16 years old or pregnant women to visit the client. Limit visitors to 30 minutes a day. Visitors should be at least six feet away from the patient. Save bed linens until the source is removed and dispose of the linens in the usual manner. Other equipment can be removed from the room at any time. If the radiation implant dislodges, we want to encourage the client to lie still. Use, we're going to use long-handled forceps to retrieve the radioactive source. We're going to deposit that source into a lead container, contact the radiation oncologist, and document the occurrence in the actions taken. All right, so let's talk about patient education for those with cancers. So First, breast cancer. So this is an invasive and metastases by the lymph nodes. It increased the risk in females over 50 or those who have the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene. We can teach our patients to do a breast exam. They can do this in the shower when the skin is slippery. We want to tell them to use the opposite hand to assess the breast. So our right hand to the left breast. So the right hand to the left breast. We want to use small circular motions in a spiral pattern to examine the entire breast, check for lumps, hard knots, thickening of the tissue. We can have them teach them to look in the mirror with the hands at the side, raise their arms up over their head, assess for any changes in shape or dimpling. We want to place hand, tell them to place their hands on the hips and press firmly to tighten the pectoral muscles and absorb for any changes in symmetry. And when lying down, they can also do this where they feel their breast with the opposite hand in a spiral motion. So post mastectomy, so if they remove the breasts, we're going to teach the patient to avoid overusing the effective arm during the first few months. Keep unaffected arm elevated to avoid lymphedema. Avoid strong sunlight on the effective arm. Do not let the effective arm hang dependently. We want to avoid constricting clothing. Have them avoid blood work and blood pressure on that affected arm. Education for testicular cancer. So this most often occurs between 15 and 40 years old, obviously, in men. It can metastasize to the lungs, liver, bone, adrenal glands, and lymph nodes. When teaching patients about a testicular self-exam, it's best to have them assess right after the shower, gently lifting, feeling around. It should feel like an egg with no lumps. Um, you can roll them around to feel for lumps and swelling and mass and notify your doctor if there's any changes from one month to the next. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.